Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending this presentation. Uh, the topic I'm working on, what I'm doing is on provision of after school programs in response to the educational needs and outcomes of new Ghana students in Canada. So maybe, as you know, Canada is many an immigrant society, and there are many immigrant families that are coming to Canada, and that means they put a stress on the education system and the system has to respond to the needs of these children. Uh, to give you a, a bit of the background is that this project was financed by the support of students program, uh, which falls under the Employment Social Development Canada, is the government department, which uh, was created in 2019 to provide support to children, both young people within the United society and those who are coming to Canada. And the department tries to invest in the education of all the young people, but particularly those who are supposed to stay in school and continue with their education. So they try to promote young people to remain in school and continue, particularly from high school, then transition to a post-secondary education. Uh, in terms of uh, migration, When you look at those who come from countries which are not European in nature, striped as white, those are what we call racialized, racialized populations, the number grew from 4.7 in 1981 to 26.5 in 2021, which means there are many immigrants who are coming to Canada, those who are not coming from European countries. And amongst these immigrants, those who do not speak English or French is the mother language was 24.2%. English and French are official languages in Canada. These are the languages that I used in school. Therefore, it means this 24.2% of the parents who came with their children, they have children who face problems when they go to school because of the medium of instruction, which is not the same as the home language. Uh, the population of uh, immigrant students has also grown up. And for example, the Toronto District School Board, which is one of the largest district boards in Canada, in 2010, they had 42% of their East students who were foreign born, which means these students had come to Canada already uh, with parents who were coming in as either refugees or economic immigrants. And 38% of the students in this school board were children of parents who were either the parents who had already come to Canada and the children were then born in Canada, not outside of Canada. The 42% were born outside of Canada and 38% were born inside of Canada. In 2022, uh, 2 million children were recorded in Canada and these 2 million children were under the age of 15 years. And this figure had also risen from 26.7% in 2011 to 31.5% in 2021, according to the statistics of Canada, which keeps these figures. And some researchers also found that children of immigrants are more likely to experience uh, school challenges compared to those who are non immigrants. In other words, these children are coming to Canada with their parents who are foreign born experience challenges when they enter the Canadian school system. And one of the problems that of integration, how they integrate and adjust into the Canadian school system. And they have to go through what we describe as acculturative stress, trying to adapt to the culture. And if they fail to do so, then they might experience problems in adapting to the school culture. <laughs> When we looked at school and academic challenges that these children face, 
uh, we discovered that most of the research focus on what we call the deficit theory that looks at the leg. What is it that lacks amongst these children? What is it that they are not finding in the school? What is it that they do not bring into the school to help them? So the theory looks at how these students are failing to adapt to and integrate into the school college. So the blame is not on the system, the blame is on the students that they are failing to adapt to the school culture. And one issue that they experience that of racism and discrimination. The theory itself does not look at how these children experience racism and discrimination that will lead to mental health, health problems. And these mental health problems also uh, have effect on their social well-being the racism and discrimination itself also makes them feel excluded from the school system. They feel alienated from other students. They feel alienated from the teachers. Therefore, they end up feeling that they are not part of the school system itself. And one issue is also of the low expectations that teachers have of immigrant students. They feel that immigrant students do not compete as much as the United students because of the lack of abilities, capabilities that are defined in terms of the deficit theory. And the teachers also stereotype these students in terms of not being good students. So once this becomes internalized by students, it makes them feel that they're not part of the system. The prejudice itself makes them uh, feel that they cannot be defined as the PA students within the school setting that supports them at all. But one issue that is also observed is that of language as a barrier. Students who come from non-English speaking countries or non-French speaking countries experience the language problem when they come into the school. So failure to communicate with teachers and other students might lead to them not contributing to school engagement in the classroom. Therefore, it might also lead them to failure. Then there's the issue of the accent, what we call accent discrimination. There are students who come to Canada who speak English fluently, proficiently, but because of their accent, they are seen as not capable. So the school system tries to change them through the ESL, English as a second language program, to make them speak like Canadians. So some of these students feel that the system itself is trying to assimilate them, trying to change them. Therefore, they might try to resist, which might also uh, cause them to fail in the education system. Because the resistance is part of what they want to define themselves so that they maintain their own cultural and self-identity. Then there's also the issue of the curriculum where the school knowledge is defined in terms of the Eurocentric knowledge that Canada presents to them. So most of the immigrant students do not identify with the knowledge that is taught in schools because the knowledge itself alienates them. They do not find their own experiences, their own cultures being portrayed by the education system. So most of them might be, feel that the system is not supported. They might become disengaged by the system. However, not all students who are immigrants are failing in school. There are some who are doing very well, as we shall see from statistics later on. They try to bring in their own forms of strength into the school, what we call the strength-based approach that is used. And this strength-based approach is a counter-narrative to the cultural deficit theory. It doesn't focus on the weaknesses of the students, but it focuses on the strengths that the students bring into the school system, that they bring into their learning environment. So it focuses on the academic growth of students as well as the empowerment of students. How are the students empowering themselves in order to succeed in school? So the theory focuses on the competencies, the assets and the resources of their own academic success. These assets could be community assets that they bring into the school system. 
it could be their own culture that they see as very important into, uh, to their learning. So when they bring it into the school system, that culture helps them in learning. So it takes that holistic view of students as empowered actors, rather than simply students who are failing as portrayed by the deficit theory. Uh, some of the reasons why students are doing very well, that is immigrant students, is because of their parents. What is called the will ambition that the parents have. The parents try to make their students do well. The parents have got that culture of education that they bring in Canada. Some of the parents are well educated, particularly if they came to Canada through the economic immigrants class. The economic immigrant class, for instance, looks at the immigrant who is educated, highly educated, who has got either, either an undergraduate degree or a graduate degree, either master's or doctorate. It also looks at those professional parents. So the skills program selects parents or uh, immigrants who are already well educated and have got skills. So these are the parents who have got this real ambition to push their students or their children to do well in school. These are the parents who are also education inclined because they already value education themselves and they support that culture of education to make sure that the, their children go to school, do well in school for their good future. So they think the best of their future comes from education. So they have that culture of education. Then earlier when I said some of the students try to focus on maintaining their culture, this ethnic cultural capital that they have helps them in doing well in school. One, they might have a respect for authority. That's how they are taught by their culture. Respect for authority means when they go to school, they respect the teachers. They listen to the teachers. Students have reported that Canadian students, those who are not immigrants, do not respect teachers at all. They speak back to the teachers. They can be rude to teachers, but immigrant students do not do that. That's a very important resource, respect for the teacher, respect for authority. At the same time, these students also have got, as part of their uh, culture, the ambition to do well. Ambition is very important in some cultures. To be able to succeed in life, you must have ambition. So that becomes a resource that they can use for their own academic success. Then one important also aspect of these student, students is resilience. How they feel about themselves, the hope that they have, that the future is bright if they do well in school. So resilience is that willpower that they have, that despite the disadvantages they might be facing, despite the discrimination, the racism, despite the low expectations of teachers, they have that hope that they can do it and succeed in school. So resilience is very important to these students. So when you look at the rates of educational participation and attainment amongst immigrant students in Canada, PISA has shown that in Canada, there is superior school participation that you find among the first and second generation immigrants. These do well, they attend school, they do enroll in post-secondary education, and they do so in higher rates, as the figures shall so show later on. And it was also found through research that the younger a child immigrates to Canada with their parents, they are more likely to do well and to participate in post-secondary education. When they immigrate as young children, they can quickly adjust to the Canadian education system, they can easily adapt to the environment and the school setting. Therefore, it can help them to promote educational success. And the statistics in Canada, according to the government, reports that children of economic immigrants, the ones that I explained earlier on, that they come with their parents who are already well educated, if they are admitted at the age of 20, they are more likely to be in school than non-immigrant. So at age 20, you find that there are more children of immigrants 
who are likely to be in school than those who are non-immigrants. Uh, in 2019, it was reported that the rate of participation in post-secondary education was 70.3% for immigrant children, compared to 58.9% of the overall Canadian student population. So immigrant students were doing very well. <laughs> Okay, so newcomer students from Africa participated at a rate of 81%, and those from China at a rate of 88%, and those from Central America at a rate of 62.1%. So we also look at the uh, completion of high school. So newcomer youth at age 19 are likely to be 2.5 times more likely to complete high school compared to those who are born in Canada. And 84% of them are the second generation. Now, let me go to this part and go to the next stage of the research that we did was look at uh, how the after school programs are being provided in Canada. The purpose of this study, according to what the uh, employment and social development Canada wanted us to do, was to look at the availability of after school programs in Canada and what they can do to assist. So we found that, that for integration to take place amongst um, uh, immigrant students, they have to go through a process of adjustment. And not only are the schools doing that, some schools might be failing to do so. So out of school program or after school school program are uh, replacing the role of schools in trying to help students to adjust. So these are found within uh, the social or the safe support organizations that are found in Canada. So the question was, are there such uh, support service organizations that are providing after school programs? So let me leave the, this all information and go to the findings themselves. So what we did through in terms of method, methodology was to use both qualitative and quantitative. So we're looking at the websites of these organizations to see what programs that they are providing. So in Canada, the provinces are the ones that are responsible for education. It is not provided by the federal government. So these are also the provinces and the three territories that are in Canada. Uh, the territories are where you find that the indigenous people mostly live. So we found that in terms of the service provider organizations that are in Canada, most of them are in Ontario, where they are the biggest population of immigrants followed by Alberta and British Columbia. Then at the bottom, we find that the territories like Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut do not have many programs or that are provided to immigrants or to immigrant students, particularly because there are not many of them who go to live in these uh, territories because it's very cold and there's lack of employment opportunities. So parents not to take their children to live in those uh, areas. Then when it came to the school programs or after school programs themselves, 65% or 65 were found also in Ontario. Ontario is the highest number of after school programs because that is where most of the immigrants settle, followed also by Alberta, then British Columbia, Saskatchewan. And at the bottom, there were also the territories because, like I said earlier on, uh, many immigrant parents do not go to live into, the, into these territories because of the uh, weather conditions and lack of opportunities. In terms of also distribution, we find that most of the after school programs are in big cities, like Greater Toronto area, and most of the after school programs that were provided to newcomer students. Followed by Greater Vancouver is also a big city, then Calgary and Edmonton. So most of the programs are in the west, rather than the east or the uh, east of the country, because most immigrants want to go where the jobs are, except for obviously for Ontario, but most of them go to Calgary, Edmonton, and British Columbia or Vancouver because they think that opportunities are available there. So, in terms of the types of programs that were provided by these service provider organizations, academic support, which is very helpful to immigrant students in terms of homework clubs. Uh, was 14% in terms of the numbers. Then there are what we call settlement workers in school, those who are there to help students adapt to the school environment, 
4% of the organizations in after school programs that in settlement workers in schools. In settlement workers in schools also have your parents, the parents to know what schools expect, the policies of schools and, and so forth. So they prepare the youth and the parents for the school. Other programs that were available were those of tutoring, mentoring, tutoring students, PA networking, uh, school readiness and career readiness, all those were being uh, used by immigrant students so that they can improve their own academic success. So in conclusion, we are saying that academic or uh, after school programs that are found, uh, provided by SPOs, service provider organizations are very important for immigrant students because they help them to integrate into the school system. They are also important because they provide them a form of normals whereby they are not judged by their own uh, maybe skin color or language or accent because they are among people who are like them. So when they are being prepared for school, the after school programs are doing a good job in terms of preparing them. It also provides networking, which this may still may find in school because of discrimination or being excluded. So the economic, uh, the employment in social development Canada also wanted us to recommend what to do in terms of whether they should continue supporting these service providers who are providing after school programs. So our recommendation is that they should continue to provide funding so that these programs can grow or a new program can be designed. For example, when it comes to mental health, refugee students, for instance, not have enough support. Therefore, new programs which are tailored for them could be very important to help them in academic success. And also programs that contribute to the growth of resilience, because resilience is a very important factor in also uh, helping students feel good about themselves and to promote academic success. Then there was also a recommendation on bridging programs. Some students, for example, when they come to new countries, they might be older, they might not be seen as not uh, of a certain level within the school. So bridging programs can be done out of school, whereby they are prepared to go into school later, whether uh, in mainstream or different <coughs> types of schools, so that they can continue with their school, uh, schooling or education. Also targeted scholarships can also help immigrants, particularly those who might uh, leave school early because they have to work to support their families like what most immigrants and uh, students do. Thank you. Thank you.